That was powerful, Selena. I have to say, I've only been to Samoa and to Fiji in that region. I haven't been to the Marshall Islands, but you really brought it home. And I remember at the COP, the refrain, the slogan was 1.5 to stay alive. And at that time, even coming into the COP, we didn't think we'd get 1.5 in the text, if you remember. Um, it, you know, it, wasn't, it didn't seem as if countries would agree, especially some of the more powerful countries. Um, what does it mean, and how did the support for 1.5 to stay alive make you feel um, at the COP and, and now? It was a very, very powerful moment for us Marshallese. Because, um, as you've said, when we went into the COP21, 1.5 was in, seemed almost impossible to be put into the paper. But then I remember when they said 1.5 was in the paper, our a former, mini, for, former foreign minister, Tony De Bruyne, just stood up all of a sudden and just screamed, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that, yeah. that was when it really signaled yeah. that this was yeah. a very victorious moment for a lot of us and the support, and it would not have been possible if it wasn't for the, from, from the outside support of the organizations that have been working hard to get this number out there and a lot of the supporters for climate change, um, people who are, for people who are very extremely vulnerable to climate change, so mm. thank you. Mm. And you, know, you mentioned that uh, the people of the Marshall Island haven't been, uh, islands haven't been responsible for causing this problem, uh, and yet you're feeling increasingly the kind of brunt of it, and you recognize um, the, the injustice of uh, climate change, and you've called for global justice. Um, how would you see it if, for example, we can achieve global justice? What does it mean for you? For me, it would mean my island being there, for us Marshallese to continue having our own home, our own land, where our ancestors set sail from somewhere in Southeast Asia and decided to, they just wanted mm. to sail and then find another land and then they came across our islands and have been in, staying there for a thousand years and so the, our land has been passed down for generations. So mm. it would mean our land being there, us living there, our cultures and our ways of life preserved mm. and continue on mm. for the future. I must say, I've reflected this before, but you caused me to, to think of it again. You know, when the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was being drawn up by different nationalities under the chairmanship of Eleanor Roosevelt, a widow of an American president, in 1948, and they were thinking about how to frame universal human rights for the whole world, they would never have imagined, it would have been inconceivable, that human activity might cause whole countries to go out of existence. You know, it's an interesting uh, challenge. Um, I'm very conscious, and we talked about this a little beforehand, uh, Selina, that uh, I'm at least one, probably two generations beyond you. You're older than you, so this is an intergenerational um, uh, conversation. But I have to say, when I was your age growing up in Ireland, we never thought about it. I never thought about sea level rise. We, we bathed in the sea, even though it was cold. And it just wasn't part of my consciousness. But I get the impression that for you and your generation, and your generation more broadly, not just in Pacific Islands and vulnerable countries, but more broadly, that you are conscious. What difference is that going to make? What, what kind of um, leadership and commitment will you be able to give? I believe that um, there's been a lot of involvement from the youth as, uh, during this generation, and so a lot of them have been very active in um, women rights, um, climate change, uh, education and such, and so a lot of youth have been very active in these fields, and so that has um, given it a lot, that has made it a much more powerful, especially as it's coming from the younger generations. It's, we are the one uh, facing these problems right now, hmm. and we're um, vulnerable to it. And also um, there's, with the help of the social media, as hmm. it has become a very powerful tool, hmm. and so with that, a lot, of, a lot of things have been spread out, and so we've become more connected as social media unites us all. Hmm. And do you feel connected with young people around the world through social media? I mean, do you have friends all over the world? Yes, I go to an international school and there's um, 88 of us, 88 different nationalities in my school. And so when you're in there, you feel like you're connected to the rest of the world. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to continue this conversation for a, long, uh, for a long time, Selena, but time is of the essence at an opening, I think. But I think you've really uh, not only made a very powerful case for the Marshall Islands and all the other climate vulnerable, but you've also uh, emphasized the urgency 
that we need to take action, we need to take it now, and we need to think in terms of that 1.5. I mentioned in my speech, we have to kind of get into a 1.5 frame of mind. People said it was not possible. Even scientists say we haven't studied it enough. But actually, that's what's going to make the difference, that we actually walk the talk of 1.5 and make it happen and make your island be part of the future. Let's hope that will be the case. And now I think we'd better vacate the stage. <laughs>